Imagine you were born 20 years earlier. Take a moment right now to think about how the world would have been a different place around you as you grew up, as you took your first steps, as you started school, as you met your best friend, as you fell in love and really as you learned to become an adult. Next month I turn 20 and that means that as hard as it may be for some people in this room to comprehend, I've grown up in a world where I've always had instant access to the internet. And that means that some of my earliest memories revolve around being online. For example, when I was eight, I would rush home from school to get on the family computer to uh, go online and play games or enter competitions that I never won or look at optical illusions on Google because for an entire year of my life, I thought that Google was an optical illusion website. But before long, the internet and being connected to people online would play a much bigger role in my life than I could ever have imagined. When I was 14, and after spending a couple of years dabbling in business, my then business partner and I decided that we wanted to create something meaningful to us. We both lived in the same small town, Corby, and we both had an interest in publishing. And so we decided to create a magazine about Corby. After a few days of arming and ahhing, the creatively named Corby magazine was born. <laughs> I know. And now, I know what you're thinking, because we were thinking the same at the time. How do two kids start up and run a print publication? And naturally, I had a lot of questions. I didn't know how to design for print. I didn't know the technicalities of having a magazine created. I didn't know how to find suppliers or how to fund the project. And frankly, I didn't know how to be taken seriously. Realistically, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. But this is where the internet first presented itself as something more than where I could go and play games or waste my life away. Suddenly, the internet was my classroom. It was my mentor. And without sounding dramatic, it was the biggest variable in the success of the three-year-long Corby magazine project. People from all over the world, most of which I've yet to meet to this day, were teaching me how to start, run, and grow my business. It was powerful. After Corby magazine, and via a short stint in Lord Sugar's boardroom, I started my current project, Magnate. And starting Magnate was another step into the unknown. I mean, sure, I knew a little bit about publishing, but suddenly I was a 16-year-old left in charge of a, a printed magazine distributed across the whole of London, read by tens of thousands of people, and I had to learn quickly. I had to learn about human resources, about time management, about logistics and accounting, and realistically, I had to learn how to run a real business. And again, this is where the internet came in. People were teaching me how to, how to run this business. They were giving me advice. Where I am today, the people I know, and ultimately, the reason I've stood here on this stage is down to small, meaningful events connected to me through the internet, where I've met people, and I've done things. And the reality is this. These small, meaningful events aren't unique. They happen millions of times around the world every day. And people are using the power of the internet and connectivity to make real change. It's a new democracy. And an example of this real change, or an awe-inspiring example of this real change, came a few months ago when this photo appeared on the internet. This is a three-year-old Syrian boy, and he's dead. He died when he and his family were making a crossing from his native country into, uh, into Europe. And in the weeks and months before that photo appeared online, national papers ran front page after front page talking about a migrant invasion. But that photo changed the focus. No more were people talking about scaremongering headlines. So suddenly we were realizing the scale of what is probably one of the biggest human crises of our time. On the left behind me is a Daily Mail front page from a few weeks before that photo. And on the right is the one from the day afterwards. No longer were the papers telling the people how to think. The people were telling the papers how to think. But the changes which that photo had were, were more profound than that. In the hours after this photo appeared on Twitter, proactive users got to work, and as well as a raft of other positive changes, a petition was created to tell the UK government, look, this is a real problem, and we need to take our fair share of these refugees. Because of the active participation of Twitter users and real, small, meaningful events on Twitter, real change was created, lifelong change was created, 
the tens of thousands of the most vulnerable people in this world. But this change isn't just be, being felt by the, the faceless, nameless <coughs> masses of you know, well-publicized events. Ahmed Mohammed is a 14-year-old schoolboy. And the 14th of September this year was a normal day for him. He went to school in Texas and he rushed to find his engineering teacher because he had created a homemade clock and he couldn't wait to show his peers. In his own words, he just wanted to impress his teachers. Now, this is a photo of the clock he made, and most people would look at it and say, OK, it looks like a homemade clock. It's a homemade engineering project. But one of his teachers thought differently. She was of the opinion that it looked like a bomb. After an hour and a half of being interrogated by police and taken from school in handcuffs in front of all of his friends, this tweet was posted. Now, so far, so bad, but this tweet quickly gained momentum. The tweet itself got 5,000 retweets, but the conversation it started and the chain, re the chain reaction of events which happened afterwards was huge. President Obama got in touch with this 14-year-old, invited him to the White House. Twitter have offered him an internship because they love engineers. Google have invited him to their science fair. Pharrell Williams and other celebrities got in touch and said, look, carry on doing what you're doing. Mark Zuckerberg invited him to Facebook. And thousands of other people around the world got in touch to offer him advice and to wish him luck. These small but meaningful events, powered by the internet, are happening all around us. And so as I turn 20, I think it's important for us as a generation to reflect on where we are. We have the tools available to us to make real change. We can start a revolution from our bedroom. We can affect politics with hashtags. And we can make a stand whilst quite literally sitting down. And so we can be known as a generation of cat memes, of internet consumerism, and of hotline bling vines. Or we can be known as a generation who grasp the unique position we're in and use the connectivity of the internet to drive real, meaningful, and lasting change. I know which one I'm going for. Thank you.